Today, we've got a special treat for you. We have the new S2 from Fractal Design. This is the successor to the Define S, which we reviewed, oh, a few years ago. Uh, do you know what the S signifies? Let us know in the comments. Now, this is gonna retail for $149.99 with the tempered glass side panel, and it should be available by the time you're watching this overview. Now, I'm gonna give you a warning I've got Mosquito from Mosquito Mods in the shop with me, and him and I typically really geek out about <laughs> Fractal Design cases. We go deep, as we've worked with Fractal Design as product consultants, so we will dissect features and discuss the product far more than any other reviewers. So just a heads up, uh, if you got maybe a half hour or so <laughs> of your time. <laughs> and we trust that they won't get offended. <laughs> By the way, you can say hi to uh, everyone at Fractal Design in Sweden who typically watches our overviews. Here you can see the general case specifications for the Fractal Design Define S2, which includes the case dimensions, the maximum length of a video card allowed, or the maximum height of a CPU cooler allowed. I'll also post a link in the video description so you can see these still shots individually. Moss, what is your first reaction to seeing the S2? It's been a while since I've seen the Define S. So honestly, there's a lot of things that are, they're getting a little fuzzy for me between, okay, what was, what was on the S and what was on the R6? It, it's kind of like they just took the two and combined them, took the best parts from each of them and, and came up with this. So yes. I, think, I think I like it overall at first glance. I can already see some things that are different from the R6, but I also see a lot of very, very similar things. And even some things that we, I believe, called out that we wish we would have had in the R6, like that little plate right there. So yeah, you can you can kind of see the DNA of, of both of the R6 and the Define S in, in this guy. And I, I think they're still on a pretty good track with it. All right, checking out the top, we're gonna kind of go from right to left. You get black USB 3.0 ports. Gone are the blue ones, I like that. Two of those, two USB 2.0 ports. Power button, you can kind of see a little bit of the, the power LED light around the button, but in typical fractal design, design? Fractal design design? Fractal design? However you wanna say that. They designed it typical to their own in-house designs where you have the slot in the front for the, the different power LED. And then something that's nice, they just included the Type-C USB port on the case from the start. So you don't have to buy a kit and then swap out your IO like you did. I think that was the R6 you had to do that on. You could buy this whole thing, but you, it didn't come with that by default. So it's really nice to see that, that you have that option because there's a lot more devices out there that use USB Type-C now. And then you also have your reset button and microphone and headphone jacks. All right, checking out the back of the case, you can see this big button, just like the R6. That's their new Majuvent. Same thing as on the R6, which is really nice because this is quite a bit heftier than the old Majuvents that they used to have that we <clears throat> broke when we were reviewing, I think that, what was that, the R5? But uh, yeah, this is a little bit tricky, but you can pop out by kind of grabbing wherever you can. And there we go. So there's, there's a definite side to start on. You can kind of see this side has these little lips on the edge, and the opposite side is more of a kind of frame there's, there's no, no real area to hold on to while you do that. So I found it easiest to start on this side when you try and take this out, but then you just kind of work all the way down. Now you have your plastic top panel. So you can just put that in there like that. Now you can have ventilation in the top if you wanted to put a radiator or fans or just have it open. Similar to the R6, you have the same kind of top plate once you remove the top panel. And there's just, what, four screws? One, two, three, four screws that hold this in place. You take those out, 
you can tip this up and then this whole panel comes out. So if you wanted to mount your fans or your radiator or whatever you feel like putting up here, you can do that and then put the whole thing back in so you don't have to try and reach inside the case and deal with all of that. It does have space to mount 120 millimeter fans offset. So it's in the same line as the back fan on the back side of the chassis above the motherboard IO. So that gives you the clearance that you need to be able to use a thicker radiator and fan combination or multiple fan, you know, push pull configuration on a radiator or whatever without running into your motherboard. And that just kind of helps cut down on the overall height of the case so you don't have to have all that space above the motherboard mounting. Um, so this obviously fits 120s in either location. So I'm assuming that these must be 20 millimeters apart so you can either mount your 140 here or here. Slightly less offset, but still the same concept. Uh, let's see, what else do we have in here? We have some springs. Nice and simple, mechanical, just a, a bent piece of metal on there and that's so that when you have your top panel in there, and then you push the button, there's something holding against these latches so that way when they release, it'll pop up so you don't have to try and reach inside the case and pop that panel up while you're pushing the button. It's just, it's just a nice little design to make it easier to deal with that and try and take that thing out. And then, got a big hole in the top of it. I can't believe they missed that, Jeez, Does anybody use these anymore? Check that out. I don't even think you can find those new anymore, at least this particular one. No, that's a collector item right there. This one, what was this, Danger Den? Mm hmm I think that's probably my favorite fill port to date. Yes. There's a lot of, you can buy a lot of, I think they call them what, either pass-through ports or bulkheads sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so if you wanted to have a custom water cooling loop, you could easily put a nice fill port, drain port, right in the top, use that, nice convenient. Or we were actually just taking a look at it too, and if you had one of those rubber grommets for like the back of a case where you pass, or are supposed to be able to pass water cooling tubes through, I've used those before and then just put a button in them. So if you wanted to have a switch for LED lights or if you wanted to do some sort of a weird stealth mod with a, a power button or something, you could put that in there if you, if you were creative enough. There's three tabs on one side. Those slip into the three holes on one side of the chassis. So once you've done that, then you just kind of push it down all the way down. Taking a look at the back of the case, it's a pretty, pretty typical back of the computer case. You get room for either a 140 or a 120 millimeter fan. Comes pre-installed with a fractal design 140 millimeter fan. These ones are a thousand RPM. And you get obviously your room for your IO, your seven expansion slots, but then you get an extra two bonus slots. This, is, this was also on the R6, so you can have your vertical mounted GPU without any modding required, unless you feel like it. I guess I don't know what else you would do, but you also have the bracket similar to the R6 where you can install your power supply. You can pop this bracket off pull the whole thing out with the power supply still attached and then you can either um, flip this over if you want to have the fan pointing down or up depending on which direction you want that because as you can see there's only one way that you can install the power supply in this bracket so with that one screw being offset there and not having the same thing over here you can only achieve that by flipping the whole bracket end for end but they allow for that so that's nice and the reason why you have to have this bracket is because this power supply shroud still riveted in place. So you still can't get that out unless you bust out the drill and the eighth inch drill bit. Uh, you get a nice big filter all the way across the bottom that slides out the front, which is nice since you don't really have a way to slide it out the back usually. I typically have my computer pushed right up to the wall, so that doesn't really work when you have to go that direction so nice big filter for that 
And then you also have room for up to a pair of 140 millimeter fans, or you can drop down to 120 millimeter fans if you wanted to do that. Um, eh, I don't know if I fully understand the usefulness of that. I know you can, if you wanted to, you could put a radiator down here and run the tubing up through the panel in the middle. It's, it still kind of sounds like it'd be a big pain in the butt since you still can't remove that shroud, but it is nice if you wanted to do that. You could get in there and install whatever you want in the bottom so you can have extra radiator space, more fan airflow through the system or whatever you want. Uh, these are the brackets for mounting this uh, filter in place. And then you also get four feet that have little rubber pads on the bottom of them. So that helps isolate any vibrations from the case and make sure you won't scratch up your desk or wherever you happen to put your case. And then the fractal design label with your serial number, model number, and fractal design's logo and all that, which I appreciate that they take the time to put that on the bottom. They could easily slap that sticker on the back. I which know most companies do. Yeah, that's yeah. what most people do. And I also like the fact that they don't feel the need to put their logo all over everything. It's kind of nice, like, you see the fractal design there, you don't see anything for that on the front. You used to, though. You used to. You know what? They listened to consumers that didn't want it. It's true. I mean, when you're going for the minimalist design, mm -hmm. you, it's just easier to do that when you don't have anything else on the front. Because <laughs> every little thing that you put on the case when you don't have very many other, like, standout features like that is just, it's very loud when you do. So that's something that I do appreciate. So if you want to remove the front bezel, suggest you take this thing out first. And this is actually on there pretty snugly. So the way I try and do it, so I'll kind of lift up on the case and then pop that out with my thumb. And then it just kind of comes right off. So taking a look behind that front panel, you get a pair of pre-installed Fractal Design 140 millimeter fans. If you wanted to, you can also put in 120 millimeter fans instead. Why would you want to do that when you can fit 140s? Uh, well, if you wanted to fit a 360 radiator in the front, you're probably going to want to use 120 millimeter fans because it won't fit a 140 millimeter based, what is that, 420 millimeter fan radiator. So the capacity in front is a 360. You can get one in there. Um, everything is mounted in slots, so you can move things up and down, whether you want the ports on the top or the bottom or whatever. Uh, it is nice that you can do that. You just have to do a little bit of configuration work that we'll get into later, but all that is pretty straightforward. So if you were so inclined as to install a radiator and you felt like you wanted to have more space on the inside, you can mount your fans on the outside of the chassis. They will fit behind the bezel. So there is, there's actually a decent gap there, you can kind of see. So this plane here is where the, the uh, front of the chassis would be. So if we do that, there's actually a decent amount of space there. There's a pretty good gap. Yeah, some people will probably argue that what you want to do is keep your fan further away from this front panel because the closer you have the fan to any sort of surface, the louder that fan's going to be. But I think that is where making your own custom front for this bezel probably be pretty easy. And I think if you really wanted to take care of your any potential airflow problems, that'd be a good option to try. All right. Be very, very quiet. We're shooting fans. So these are the fans that come with. They are, well, let's see, they say Fractal Design Dynamic X2 GP-14 assuming the 1.4 stands for 140 millimeter. And they are rated, for what that's worth, at 68.4 CFM, 18.9 decibels. They are 1,000 RPM and 0.71 millimeter of H2O for the static pressure. Um, not really gonna do a whole lot if you have a dense fin radiator, like a hardware labs or something like that, but on something that's better optimized for low flow fans, uh, well, I guess hardware labs has those too, but like I typically go towards uh, AlphaCool for if I'm gonna have a lower speed fan with 
a little bit less static pressure, but they're very quiet. And you get three of them in the case out of the box. Three of them pre-installed, two in the front, one in the back. The Fractal Design S2 bezel is an entirely new design and we're going to take a closer look at it by dissecting it and giving you an idea what is involved with its construction. First off, you'll see that it has the sound insulation dampening foam on the back side of it. Makes it pretty nice, pretty, pretty solid. So that's something that Fractal has been doing forever with the, the fine series cases, but Aha! Filters. I know I've been complaining about that on a lot of cases. I know they've had it in some of their other cases too, but those just snap in and out. It's a nice filter that covers all of your air intake on both sides. So you've got that one and then there's the same thing on the other side and they're interchangeable so you don't have to worry about, oh, did I take that out of the correct side and put it back where it belongs and all this and all that. So they both work on either side. And that's actually pretty nice. I like that I like that they even used the, the matching colored mesh. So you get the white mesh with the white bezel and everything. Everything is tied together nicely. The face snaps in place with clips along the border. And it's kind of tricky. They're a bit firm. So you may be able to do it with your fingers or you'll need a flathead screwdriver. Now, this is the third time that we're going to take it apart. So it may be a little bit looser. There's a joke there. <laughs> oh, there you go. You did it. You got a little technique. Almost. There's one of them that just grabs a little bit weird. There we go. Okay. So it, the first time I tried starting at an end and going that way, don't do that. Start at a side and kind of go across. So I started at a corner, worked all the way down that side, kind of keeping a little bit of pressure up as you go so they don't snap back in. And then I just kind of went all the way around. Look at that potential. Right side up. I mean, if you wanted to make your own front panel, mm -hmm. how much easier does that get? I'm just estimating that it's, it's part of the manufacturing process. It just made more sense to hand assemble them this way versus molding it in one piece. That way they can put the uh, dampening foam on probably by hand at the factory. Yeah, I almost wonder too if maybe at some point they'll have a white brushed front that you, that is an option for the color combinations or something. Because then, then I can see it that you have the same white plastic frame and you just slap a different colored aluminum piece on the front of it. But then again, I guess what would stop them from just doing that if it was all one piece anyway? So I don't know. If you have any thoughts or theories, let us know in the comments. Or if you work at Fractal and you know exactly why you did it. <laughs> they won't say anything. <laughs> But I like it because this, this I obviously we haven't taken it off yet, but this is just stuck in place. If you kind of look where all these little tabs come out, you can see down in there, there's a little bit of adhesive on that. So you can see that it's just kind of stuck mm -hmm. in place. Oh, okay. So I think if you really wanted to, you could probably start with a heat gun and a screwdriver and just start pushing at a corner to get that whole panel off this entire cover if you wanted to replace it mm -hmm. with something else. Mm -hmm. I think that could be kind of interesting. Yeah. Or maybe just get rid of it entirely and cut out a hole for fan intakes or another window or now, all kinds of options. This brushed aluminum accent, it, it seems like it's real, although it could be a fake laminate to look like it. I mean, the technology for manufacturing or the, the progression of what they can do with making simulated surfaces now is amazing, so. Yeah, it does feel cooler though, so I, it, I, hmm. I would Good feel point. like it would be a, an actual aluminum piece, but it's, it, obviously it's not very thick. <laughs> it's because you can see down in there, you know, it's just a, a little, little thin kind of veneer over mm -hmm. top of it, I'm sure, but it is nice. I think it's nicer than when they had the the brushed plastic ones. Yeah. Although it still doesn't do very good things with fingerprints. <laughs> so how fast can you put it back together? We'll find out. Should ask Fractal if they have spares of these so that way when we do this next time it breaks and oops. Oh. 
time. There you go. Actually, that wasn't too bad. No, not bad at all. All right, taking a look at the inside of the chassis, you can see the nice pre-installed reviewers sample only. Well, that's not true. We had to do that ourselves. When I say we, of course, I mean Bill did that. But I think we'll take a look at the front here, and this kind of throws back to what Bill was talking about, where where we've worked with Fracture Design before and bounced some ideas back and forth. And all these vertical slots here, they also include a pair of these brackets that have slots in them. And then you can mount those in here, like so. And then you can raise and lower those wherever you need those to be. And then obviously because they're slotted, you can mount things like pumps or reservoirs, wherever you want horizontally along that bracket. So that allows you to pretty much put it wherever you want inside the chassis. So these have been around since the original Define S, I believe. And so that's how you would mount whatever reservoir or pump combo you want or whatever other thing you wanted to put in there, I guess. It doesn't have to be for water cooling, but that's kind of what the intention behind those were. Below the motherboard, you have a little bit of space so you get a grommet hole through down to your power supply so you can route your either most likely it's going to be your kind of front panel connectors and your graphics card power cables. Most of your other cables are going to go through one of the other two grommets up here in front of the motherboard. This will take up to a, I don't know the dimensions, but extended ATX motherboard. Though, one thing that you do have to note is if it is extended ATX, you start running into, you know, where does that come out to here? You start hitting there, your grommets. but. If you have a larger motherboard, you can fit that in there. Moving out to the graphics cards. Right now we have this set up in the vertical graphics card orientation. You do either need to supply your own cable, which is what this is. It's just a PCI riser cable. Pretty much a very, very similar design, if not almost identical to what Fractal Design sells. They sell a kit, it's the VRC kit for mounting a vertical graphics card, and it just comes with some extra little standoffs, so you can put the two standoffs into the, some threaded holes in the power supply shroud, and then you can mount that PCI extension into that, so it's a little bit more rigidly held, but if you wanted to just go with your own cable, as long as it's a 90 degree cable, that'll work too. All you have to really be able to do is get it on the graphics card and get it to the motherboard, so it is kind of nice that they have that as an option still. I, I like being able to do that without having to chop up the case because sometimes when people aren't thinking about allowing that to happen, it just gets hard to fit that in there after the fact. This was something that we said we thought they should have had and it looked like they were prepared to have, but the R6 did not. There's some screws on the front that you just have to remove and then this panel pops out. That gives you room for up to a 360 millimeter radiator in the front. Obviously you can also fit a 240 or a 120 and you can also fit up to a 280 millimeter fan, uh, radiator in the front, but you cannot fit a 420 millimeter radiator in the front because there's just not enough height there. You can, however, install your 420 millimeter radiator in the top. So that can go up to the 420 or 360, obviously 240, 280, 120, 140, whatever. Something to note though, is even with the offset radiator, if you do go for a 280 millimeter, 420 millimeter, 140, whatever, in the top, you might have to start getting careful about how tall your RAM is or how deep your radiator is. Because as you can see, we barely cleared that there. Here you can see an illustrated outline showing the radiator sizes that are allowed inside the Define S2 chassis. Now take note that the maximum width, if you're going to go from a 140 single up to a 280 size radiator, is 147 millimeters wide. If you go beyond that, it's not going to work inside this chassis. Now what I've also done is I've posted a link in the video description, so if you want to get more of this information, you can go check out the link and find these types of illustrations. As far as we can tell, the same exact fan controller board from the R6, or close enough that we can't tell the difference. You get your six three-pin connectors over here for your fans, and you get three four-pin PWM connectors. This 
bottom connector is going to be your power from a SATA connector, which is nice. I will give them that. I appreciate the fact that they gave you a SATA connector rather than Molex because just get rid of Molex already. And then this connector here is, is going to your motherboard. So this will be the one that supplies the signal and all that from the uh, speed RPM sensor and the actual PWM signal to control your fans. As far as we can tell, we're pretty sure this is the one that actually reports the signal back to the motherboard. And then these two will just do whatever this one is. So same thing as the R6. Wish it had more PWM headers, but it is nice that you at least have the ability to have six different fans that are three pin and then those same three on the right hand side for PWM. Power supply shrouds look great. They hide all the cabling, but it just makes it more of kind of a, a nuisance when you're putting everything into the power supply. That's just me. Yeah, it's almost, I almost find it easier to know what cables you're going to want to use, plug them all in when you have the thing outside the case and then route them to whatever components and then deal with the extra after that. Which is, for me, that's kind of backwards to the way I normally do it otherwise. If I have easy access to the power supply, I'll usually connect it to whatever needs to be connected to, whether it's graphics card, motherboard, whatever. And then I'll route it to wherever I need to, to, to get it to the power supply. And then I plug it into the power supply rather than going the other direction. So yeah, I would, I would definitely agree. Having well, having everything removable that you might want is is always nice, but definitely if you're only going to pick one thing to be removable, power supply shrouds is usually number one on my list. So this is something that is new. I don't think I've seen this bracket from Fractal Design yet. In fact, I don't even think I've seen one quite like it from anybody yet, but this is for mounting your drives. You can see right now we have a three and a half inch drive in there. It also has the holes for mounting your two and a half millimeter drives. Two and a half millimeter? Right. <laughs> two and a half inch drives. Maybe someday they'll be that big though. Yeah, that would... <laughs> well, micro SD cards are getting real, real big capacities these days and those things are pretty... Anyway, so you might be thinking, well, that looks odd. Why is it... Why would you... So you have tabs and then you have a thumb screw. Why... Well, that's a weird way of mounting those. Why don't you just mount the drive to this panel? Which, arguably you could, but the intention of that panel is to be able to put either a radiator, well, probably not radiator, but either a reservoir or a pump or something that you can mount to the slots in that, that back panel. So doing it this way allows them to still put all your drives in there but let you be able to put screws and different sized, you know, fasteners on there for whatever you need to be mounting to the opposite side of it. So I get that and it makes sense. And they also give you a three connector SATA, I guess you'd call it an extension. So you have your male connector here, technically, and then your three female connectors. But I also have a theory as to why they include this. I don't think it's just to be nice. Because on a lot of power supplies, you get those 90 degree SATA fittings, or fittings. It's time to water cool, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> those 90 degree SATA connectors, but with the way this mounts over here, mm. you have all of this is right up here. So if it was a 90 degree connector that came out this way, you'd be hitting your side panel. Mm -hmm. If it was a 90 degree connector that went straight towards the other side of the case, you'd be hitting the motherboard tray. So I think they probably included this out of necessity because if they didn't and somebody didn't have the right connectors on their power supply, people would not be too happy. So it is nice to see that they included that. And that means that they at least thought about it a little bit because I think it would have been really easy to just ignore that yeah. and end up with shipping a case that's like, oh, yeah, whoops. <laughs> so, eh, I guess if you still use a lot of drives, you still have space for a lot of drives. You can have these three over here. They're all three the same bracket. There's just some little rubber grommets. They're pretty typical for mounting hard drives. Those go in the sides and you put the screws through that to dampen any vibrations. But 
room for three of those there. If you wanted to put your two and a half inch drive in here, you can see that there's those four mounting holes. So you would just put the drive there, put your screws in, and then everything is lined up just the same way they were on the three and a half inch drive. There, we'll just, we'll just pretend that was in there. And then there's also an additional pair of trays right here behind the motherboard. And again, similar to the R6, I like that they put these all the way down at the bottom so that when you put them on there, you have access to your power and your data connectors so that they can go back towards the power supply so you have clearance for that. I like that because I've definitely had problems with that before. I'm pretty sure that there was a case that we looked at and you made the suggestion of spacing these or the location allowing 90 degree data connectors so they would just... Yep. That way, because So for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, if you have a 90 degree connector on the end of this and they just put it right there, what are you going to do? Like that goes that direction. That's not going to work very well. So what they did is they overhang this so that your drive is flush with the bottom. And so doing that allows you to have your 90 degree connector, which is really nice because like we already mentioned, it's, it's pretty common these days to have 90 degree connectors in your power supply. So it's just nice that they have taken that into consideration as well. I know they didn't do that specifically on this case because they've done it before, but it's just a little details that I appreciate. You do have the option, if you would like, to relocate the SSD trays, either one or both of them from the back side of the motherboard to the top of the power supply shroud in the Fractal Design S2. However, if you do this with an SSD in this position right here, you can no longer mount your vertical GPU because this SSD interferes right where the PCI riser cable would connect into the GPU. So if you're going to have your video card in a standard position and if you'd like to show off your SSDs in the window, you can mount them right there if you like. So I did the system install last night with the cable routing and one thing I noticed about this area where the data cages are is that I would have liked to have seen more of these cable tie base loops like here, 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 here. And the reason being is because when I went to connect the front lower fan that's included in the case is I was trying to route the wire up to the fan hub here and it actually really wasn't long enough. Um, and it was like the last thing I wanted to do, especially since we're doing a video overview, is have the wire going over one of the cages to get to the fan hub. So what you're seeing right now is the front fan isn't actually connected and I'm going to bring an extension to the shop so I can connect that and have it nice and clean like everything else here. But it just bugged me last night that I couldn't route that one fan connector wire without having to go over these cages. And if there was an extension included and have extra cable tie loops, that would be cool. But that's just me being really aim retentive about cabling, which I am. And I know most people aren't, but it just bugged me. Yeah, well now that you mention it too, that's the only loop on this side of these grommets. There's one loop up here, otherwise there's nothing. You get the ones for these Velcro ties and that's it. There's really not that many. There's another one. Let's see, how many, how many can we find? There's one up here, ah, there's one there. And there might be three over there. So. There's some in strategic locations, but yeah, there's a definite lack of over here. And I don't, I don't really know what they would do to fix that either. Well, the only way they would change that is if they do a revised design a few years from now, if they were to, you know, revise some things and this is going to be the S3 or whatever, that they would consider adding those to the stamping at the factory. But there's nothing that's gonna be done now. It's, it's, it's all said and done now. But that was just an observation by me with having this new layout of these cages back here. The panel that comes with the case for the opposite side, similar to the top, 
you have this sound deadening in here. So that's attached to the side panel. Makes it pretty hefty, but it also cuts down on kind of the echoes and any noise that would be otherwise being transmitted through the side panel. Same exact design as the frame around the temper glass, obviously, since we put it on this side, you can see the same, same thing all the way around. Just gives you enough clearance on the other side if you had something that was a little bit closer in terms of the depth that not being a solid panel because there's this kind of thicker recess here it gives you a little bit of extra space so you don't you don't really lose anything by having that sound ending on the inside so we've got this scale out here take this opportunity to pause the video and take a guess at how much you think this side panel weighs oh look at that it weighs seven pounds no i'm just kidding Four. I can't think of another PC side panel that weighs as much as a Fractal Design side panel. So something that Fractal Design started, seamless tempered glass panel. Obviously you can't have the tempered glass edition without tempered glass. So that's what we have here. This is a clear tempered glass side panel and it's just kind of this painted section all the way around the outside and then all of the frame for actually mounting it to the case is hidden behind that. And I actually really like that approach because it keeps the outside nice and flush. So the, the top and the bottom is all flush with the side panel, but it also makes it so that you don't see a lot of the ugly bits that are kind of required still for keeping your side panel on the computer case. And it's, it's a kind of a, what, ball and catch. So you have these two little post mounted knobs on the inside of the panel. And then you have these two sockets at the top and the bottom. So here you're just pushing that right in there. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And then the front just kind of hooks in place. So you hook that and then that just pops right in place. And if you were worried about it, there's also space for two thumb screws that comes that way from the factory. You just put those back in. If you're concerned about that, just falling out, but yeah, it works pretty well and it keeps everything pretty clean. So one thing that we really couldn't get away with not pointing out, because we're sure somebody will notice it and comment on it. Yeah, there is a little bit of a difference in the color around the, I guess you'd call it the painted border behind the tempered glass. It's made especially noticeable in our lighting just because we have this so lit up for the review. But if we were to start you know, turning some of our lights off, it would become less and less apparent. So I, I feel like in your more typical office setting, you know, if you have it in your home office or wherever you have your computer, it's probably not gonna be as noticeable, but you can definitely see that there is a color difference between what's behind this glass panel right up next to it, and then what you see on the other side of it. And it's really not that much of a fault of fractal design as much as it is just the kind of composition of what tempered glass is made out of. So it's, if you've ever looked down the edge, the very, very edge of a piece of tempered glass, you'll see kind of what I'm talking about where if you can get, just look straight down on the very edge of it, you'll see that it's green. And that's just the way tempered glass is if it's not a smoke glass. So it's one of those things where it's, it's not really their fault, but it's still kind of annoying when you notice it. But like we said, thankfully it's not as noticeable when we don't have all the studio lights on for shooting the video of it and all that stuff. But that's where that's coming from is it's just because the light goes through the tempered glass and then it bounces back and forth in there and that's where you get that little green tint from. Inside the accessory box, you get extra motherboard and reservoir bracket screws, two and a half inch drive screws, three and a half inch drive mounting screws, four power supply screws, additional motherboard standoffs and standoff tool, hard drive dampening grommets for mounting, optional side panel screws, the SATA power extension cable, extra cable ties, and the reservoir mounting brackets. 
So before Moss and I share our final thoughts of the pros and cons on the Fractal Design S2, I just wanted to mention that it's available in four colors. There's a blackout version, all blacked out, and then there's black with white accents, and then there's a gunmetal gray, which is the Define R6. And I'll put a link to that overview video that we did last year. And then there's this white version with the black face. Now, let me ask you, do you like the black face bezel? Let me know in the comments. I don't like it because if I get a white PC case, I want it to be all white. What is your thoughts on that, Moss? Uh, the way it stands currently, I would agree. I'd rather have the white front panel as well. But I think I could be convinced to have a gunmetal gray front panel if they had an option to have a smoked tempered glass side panel. Because I think that would tie in pretty well to have the smoked side panel with the dark gray on the front. But the way it sits with the completely clear panel, I, I think I would agree. I'd rather have... I'd rather have a white panel on the front as well. Now my pros on the S2, I really like the new front bezel design, uh, especially the filter inserts on the sides. I've never seen that before by Fractal Design. And that's another one of those things that they listen to their fans and consumers about having a better filtration system on their front bezel. Um, and I like the fact that you can remove that face plate and do a custom bezel mod if you want for better airflow. Um, I like the tempered glass side panel, the fact that it goes on like a traditional side panel with those ball socket connectors versus having individual thumb screws. Um, I've never liked the four individual thumb screws to hold a side panel on uh, approach that some manufacturers have taken. Uh, cons. Just like the Define R6, the fact that the power supply shroud isn't removable, I hope that someday down the road that Fractal Design does something with that, maybe making it more uh, individual plates or something, at least the top or something can come out with a thumb screw. And that's basically it for my cons. And I'll go as far as saying is that this case, from what I've seen already, should be the case of the year, a mid-tower case of the year. I'd say it's a great candidate for it because it's a result of people over the years asking Fractal to make these little changes and revisions and Fractal listens to their customers and it shows because every time we get one of these samples in of a new case, you can see little changes that they've done. It's nice to see that they're not just focused on getting something that's super flashy out in front of all their customers to get them to buy it again, that they actually take the time to go back and revisit their designs and say, okay, we have this out there. It's been in the marketplace for a while. What are people saying about it? What were people mentioning in reviews? What things can we update to make this either more usable, easier to use, or just adapt it for the changing marketplace? I mean, it wasn't even that long ago that vertical GPU wasn't really that common from the modding scene. And now you can get a lot of cases, including this one, that has the ability to mount your graphics card in a vertical orientation straight out of the box. So that's, it's just one of those things. It's, it's different, I think. It's not, it's not something you see from too many other manufacturers. And I really like those drive trays for no particular reason. I don't know why, but they just work. I, I have a tendency to use old drives too, even though they're old, they still get the highest capacity. So um, I really like that on this one, they included the USB 3.1 type C from the factory. So you don't have to swap that out yourself. So that's really nice. I really wish that there was a better solution for the power supply shroud. It just, yeah, kind of like Bill said, it's just, it's hard to work with from time to time when it's just trying to get all the wires plugged in and routing everything that way. It just doesn't always work the easiest. I think it's a pretty solid case. And I, if it fits what you like, I don't really see any major downfalls to it. It's got pretty much every feature that you want, whether you're an air cooler or you're a DIY liquid cooler. 
Trying to appeal to both worlds is tricky and very few case companies can do it and get it right. So in closing, I have one question I wanna leave with all of you watching and Mosquito. Do you think it's possible to build a custom PC today that will still drop JAWS without any type of hardline tubing or RGB lighting? <gasps> what? No hardlines or RGB in 2018? I know, I know. So post your thoughts in the comments because Moss and I are debating about doing a build video series using the Define S2 that you just watched our overview on. In the meantime, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Also check out Mosquito's YouTube channel, Mosquito Mods. Just do a search in YouTube or in Google. You can also check out his website, themodskeeto.com, and I'll post links to his channel and his website in the video description. Also, please check out my store. It pays the bills, it feeds my family, and allows me to have a studio where I can make these videos and do custom build project video guides and build series. I make a wide variety of upgrade parts for your PC at mnpctech.com. Please check out my store. If you've never heard of it before, there may be something that you're interested in. So. Everybody, thanks again for watching our overview. And yes, we warned you at the beginning of the video that it was going to be longer than your typical YouTube case review. We are, um, we are not people of few words. <laughs> no, we really <laughs> truly like to geek out on this stuff. And when you've got a nice product like these fractal design cases that we just like to geek out. So I hope you stayed with us for the duration of the video and uh, you become a new subscriber or a fan. Thanks everybody for watching and have a great day.